Ecological succession is the gradual and somewhat predictable change in species composition of an area that is undisturbed um, over long periods of time. So we'll talk about primary succession, secondary succession, and also aquatic succession. And one thing I want you to keep in mind is that any disturbance within the area will change this succession pattern. This picture is demonstrating primary succession. So primary succession occurs when you're starting off with an area that is bare rock. So some examples of when you might get bare rock would be lava cooling, um, such as like when the Hawaiian Islands formed, or an abandoned parking lot, something like that. And over hundreds and hundreds of years, everything changes in this direction. So the bare rock gets replaced by lichen. And then the lichen, notice that in addition to uh, plants growing right here, we also get soil forming. And as we get more and more plants growing, we get more and more soil. And soil, all of this right here, is really important because you can't get really tall trees unless really tall trees have lots of um, soil which their roots, roots can grow into. Um, so basically the plants get larger and larger and then as your plants change and you get um, you know hardwood trees things like that your animal species are going to change too and the fungi and everything else. Um, but I want to go back and talk about lichens because those pioneer species those lichens that can colonize bare rock are really cool. All right, so lichen, that pioneer species that we see in primary succession, is actually made up of um, two different organisms living in a mutualistic relationship. So remember, both benefit. So it's between algae and fungi. Um, so what's happening is that the algae cells, because they are photosynthetic protists, are able to provide the food because they can go through photosynthesis. And then the fungi, as decomposers, are able to break down material. They are able basically to break down the rock almost um, to provide nutrients for the algae. So that's why it's a symbiotic relationship, as we can see here in this um, microscopic image of a cross-section of lichen. So you can see both the algae cells and the fungal hyphae, which is the um, it's part of a fungus. So they work together. Now what al lichen actually looks like, and you probably have seen it growing on the sides of rocks or on the sides of trees, just like this. Okay? It can be different colored, um, but that lichen, very important pioneer species in primary succession because it's basically able to start to create soil out of the rock. Oftentimes you have a disturbance such as a forest fire or a catastrophic flood or a glacier receding that disturbs the area, but there is still life present and there's still, very importantly, soil present. Okay. So this image showing after a forest fire, this is known as secondary succession. Um, secondary succession can occur a little bit faster than primary succession because there's still soil, there's probably still um, bacteria and things like that living in the soil. So it occurs more quickly and oftentimes, you know, secondary succession can occur after any sort of disturbance. Here's a um, set of pictures showing what succession might look like after a glacier retreats. So you can see the retreating glacier right here, goodbye glacier, um, and as it melts, there's soil left behind. There's not a lot of life, but we could say maybe there's some bacteria that are growing there. We can see lichen, moss, um, other small plants starting to grow here. Then you start to get more shrubs, and you get bigger and bigger and bigger trees until eventually you reach that climax community. But all it takes is a disturbance, such as a forest fire, to start succession over again. The last type of succession that I want to talk about is aquatic succession. And this is succession that can occur primarily in ponds, small lakes that are undisturbed. 
Um, so basically what happens is over hundreds of years is that sediment okay, accumulates. That's what you can see right here in the second um, picture. And as that sediment accumulates and starts to fill in the pond, assuming there's no, no one digging that sediment out, it keeps filling in, keeps filling in until eventually that pond might become kind of more like a marsh, swampy, and eventually it could just become a field. And then after hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more years, it could even become a whole forest. So that's aquatic succession. Um, remember, succession is just the gradual, somewhat predictable change in species in an ecosystem over a very long period of time.